Hey there Titans, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about how to create a secure portal using Titan Web. Now last time we talked about how to create a multi-page project in Titan Web without any kind of security or login. We displayed public data and showed how you can push data to Salesforce. Um, we didn't care who logged into our portal or whether there was login or not. We were just showing how to create multiple pages. Today, we'll be showing how to make your portal secure by adding a login. We'll show how to bring data from Salesforce from the person who logged into our portal. And we'll also show how to bring data that's relevant to the user who is logging in. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is set up our Smart V. So I'm going to click on the gear icon, user access. I'm going to make sure Smart V is turned on. Now, the first thing I want to do is choose my object that I'm logging in with. Now, you can choose any object in Salesforce that will represent a user who is logging into your portal. In my case, I'm going to choose contact, but this can be any standard or custom or managed package object. Us, it does not matter. Any object in Salesforce will do. Now, for my value, I'll typically want to use the record ID of the user or the of the record that's logging in. And this will help me identify which record is actually logging into my portal. And then I have to choose some fields that my user will log in with. Now, what's important here is that my fields together represent a unique record in Salesforce. So the set of fields or individual field that I put here should query and bring a specific record from Salesforce. If there are multiple records from Salesforce, it will not let them log in because it will not know which user to identify. So in our case, we're going to do email and I'll just choose one more field here. Let's do, for example, last name. Again, this can be any field in Salesforce. It can be a password field. It can be social security number, really whatever you'd like to have them log in based on, you can have them log in here. In our case, we're doing email and last name. Let's go ahead and click next. For conditions, now just because I let someone come into my portal who has an email and a last name in Salesforce that matches a contact in Salesforce, that doesn't mean I actually want them to be allowed into my portal. So I can set up additional conditions here to either allow or restrict certain users from logging in. For example, in my case, I'm going to come to this record in Salesforce. If I head over to details, I can see that I have a checkbox called demo checkbox and it's ticked. And what I'm going to say is that I'm only going to allow contacts who have this checkbox ticked to log into my portal. So I'm going to find that field demo checkbox. And I'm going to say if this field equals true, then I want them to be allowed to log into my portal. Otherwise, they will not be allowed in my portal. All right, so that's as far as conditions go. Let's talk about authentication. So once they log in, I want to add an additional layer of security by adding a one-time password. And this password will be sent to their email. Now, we, in a different video, we'll show also how you can have this via SMS or really any other way that you'd like to distribute it. But what essentially happens is when the user logs in with the credentials that we set up over here with email and last name, once they log in with those details, if I turn two-factor authentication on, it will send them a code to, log, to prove that that is really the user who is logging in. Now, the first thing we need to do is configure a field in Salesforce that will hold this code. And in my case, I've named that field secret key. You can name that field whatever you'd like, as long as it has six digits. And you can also check out this video right here on the iIcon to learn more about setting up that field and how this verification code works. In my case, I'm going to send an email to the user so that he gets this verification code. Again, you can SMS this to them in different ways, and we'll have a separate video showing how to distribute this code in, in different ways. And I'm also going to send this email via Salesforce, which is the best practice here. Choose an org-wide email to send it from. And in my case, I'm going to use Titan Server as a fail, as a <clears throat> excuse me fallback. I can also send via Titan, but again, it's best practice to send this via Salesforce so that your uh, users can actually identify this and it won't go to their spam. 
Next is a profile page. I can set up a profile page for my end user to see. And um, he'll basically see details from, in our case, the contact. I'm going to skip over this for now. We also have registration page. This we will include. All right. And this is in order to give our end users the ability to um, create a contact in Salesforce so that they can log into our portal. We don't have to include a registration page. In this case, I will. You can have a standard registration page where they just add a few, you add a few fields here and it will create um, a contact based on the fields that you give them here. In my case, I'm going to use a custom registration page because I've already got one set up on my, on my portal. Okay, and this is just a separate page on the portal that I built called registration. I can choose any page from my portal here. And I'm opening that in self. Um, there are different ways you can open this as a modal, as a separate um, separate page entirely. And finally, I'm going to decide if I want to pass any parameters from the record into my project. So besides for the record ID, which will automatically be passed into my project when my contact logs in, I'm also going to pass one more parameter. And that parameter is going to be the full name of my contact. All right, I've got a variable, which I'll show you in a moment, that for the full name of my contact. I'm going to choose a field from my contact record to bring into this parameter. In this case, I'm just bringing in full name field from Salesforce, and it will populate this parameter, and we're ready to go. So let's generate smart V login. Awesome. Now, once they're logged in, I want my users to be able to do a couple of things. First of all, we have this welcome message here. I want this welcome message to populate with the user's name. So I'm going to head over to Tools, Custom Variables, and let's check out. I've got this static variable, and we'll learn more about variables in a different video. But I'm going to populate this variable from my SmartV login, as we just saw together. And with a string variable, I'm going to concatenate welcome plus this variable full name, which again will be populated from SmartV. And I'm mapping that to my welcome text, which I'm showing you right over here. All right, that's all set up. Now, the other thing I want to do is I've got a number of pages here, um, a home page, which just shows some general data, and a registration page, which we talked a little bit about. But this will allow my someone to actually create a contact so that they can log into my portal. And I've also got a case creation page for uh, to be able to submit a case to our music store. Now, I'm going to add another page here. Add new page. I'm going to add a blank page. And this page is going to be a page where I can see all of the cases that I've submitted. I'm going to create a power table here. And I'm going to bring in cases. Bring in 20 cases. And I'll bring in all of the cases whose contact ID equals the contact who is logging into our Smart V. Okay, the ID of our Smart V login which we set up as the contact ID. Now I'm going to bring in a few fields from the case, such as let's do subject, let's do um, description, and let's do create a date so we know when this is created. And you know what? Let's also make sure that we're actually getting the correct contact here, and we'll bring the full name of the contact who created the case as well. Make that a bit bigger. I'm also just going to add auto grow here to make it look nicer. And let's also format the created date so that looks nice as well. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Now we need to decide a couple of things. First of all, let's name our pages here. Let's call this case, um, let's call it my cases. And I'm also going to add that to my header. Excellent. Now, notice that I have a number of different pages here. And some of these pages I want to be public for any user to be able to access. And some of these pages I only want a logged in user to be able to access. For example, my home page, I want anyone to be able to access. So I'm going to make this public. So again, I clicked on three dots, and I made it public. 
Same thing goes for my registration page. Obviously, if they need to register, that means that they're not a record in Salesforce that I can match them with. And in that case, I want to make this public as well so that anyone can access my registration page. But for my submit a case, and for my cases, I really only want people to submit a case who are logged in. And I only want people who are looking at their cases to be logged in. I'm going to leave those inherent to project and those will need to be logged in with Smart Beef. All right, I think we're basically ready here. Let's go ahead and preview. All right, so notice we have full access to our homepage here, and that's because we are on a public page. We do not need to be logged in to see any of this information or to access this page. Okay, but of course, we also have our welcome sign without any name here at all. Now, if I go to registration, same story, this is a public page. But if I now come to my cases, for example, it will require me to log in. Now this login page also be completely styled and I'll show you where we can do that. We'll come to the Smart V pages and I'll go to login, for example. And here I'm able to style anything that you see here. So for example, I can change the font of this login and let's change in the login box color. Okay, so I can really style all of these different things. I also have some settings that I can deal with. For example, the session, the Smart Fee session, how long my user stays logged in for. So for example, if they tried to access this URL again, and it was past 120 minutes since they last logged in, they will need to log in again. And I can change this time. I can disable the session, so each time they access the URL, they have to log in anew. I can have a shared session with a different web project, auto focus on the fields here. I can change my layouts to different nice layouts that we have here. And I can also change my verification uh, details, which we set up during the Smart V process. And I can also, by the way, style my verification page if I would like as well. Do save and continue. And here's our verification page. I could style this as well if I like. For now, I'm just going to leave it. All right. And notice that we say, if you don't have an account, you can sign up. That's going to bring me to my public registration page. And this is important that you make this public. Otherwise, it will not be accessible. Let's go back to my cases and let's log in. So we will need our email from this record in Salesforce. So let's grab that. And we also need the last name, which was Titan, I believe. And now it's asking me for my verification code. Now here's what that email looks like for the verification code. I'm going to grab the verification code. You can change this email and make it look however you'd like. OK, if we go back to our settings for a second, you can see here that we can edit this verification email. And really, um, we can use rich text here to make it look whatever we'd like for it to look like. I'm going to paste in my verification code for my email. And now I'm logged in and I can see my cases. And notice that the contact related with these cases is that contact that we just signed in from. Now, one more thing I'm going to show you is that if I look on the record itself, this is that verification key that I got on my email. It also populates on the record in Salesforce. So if I wanted to distribute this in a different way through Salesforce, I can do that as well. All right, so I've got my cases here. I'm logged in. I'm seeing the cases that are specific to me. I can also submit a case. And when I submit this case, it will come under this specific contact in Salesforce. And notice on my welcome page, I also see welcome Samuel Titan now because it recognizes that this specific user has logged in and brought me my full name from the record in Salesforce when I logged in and then populated this text right over here. I also have the ability to sign out here. Now I'm back to my public homepage. I would need to log in again if I wanted to, for example, see my cases. So today we learned how to set up Smart V for our project. We learned how to create a registration page for our Smart V login. We learned how to make certain pages public so that all users can see and certain pages private so that you would need a login to see. We talked about 
two-factor authentication on our smart v and also passing data from the record that's being logged in with smart v to the project just want to reiterate here everything that you see here is totally flexible it can be for any industry it does not need to be specifically a music store we did not need to log in specifically with contact in our smart v okay, we could have used any object in salesforce to verify who our user is and we could have brought any data related to that user from Salesforce. Hope you enjoyed the video today and good luck.